directed by Aditya Thai, King of Clones, a docu-film based on the controversial life of pioneer scientist Wang Wusok, is finally released on Netflix. As the docu-feature releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to briefly give you an overview of the film, explain the ending, and discuss some hidden details. But before that, a spoiler warning is in order for those who haven't watched the film yet, as we'll be discussing important plot points and character details from the movie. And if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through the video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you. And let's move on to the basic plot of the film. Wang Wusok was born in 1953 in South Korean province of Cheongchung and received all his education there before working as a biotechnology professor there. Wusok made the prestigious Seoul National University his place of employment where he continued to teach and carry out research at the time. He also developed a strong interest in the field of theriogenology which is the study of veterinary reproductive medicine. In the end, Wang Wusok entirely engaged himself in the study of cloning and stem cell research and it was through these that he attained public notoriety. When Wang Wusok successfully cloned a dairy cow in 1995, it served as his first significant exposure to the media and the general public. Because of the eminent potential that a scientific advancement like this could have for the nation, news of it quickly spread throughout South Korean media. Cloning could simplify things given that the dairy business contributes significantly to the economy and that good dairy cows and calves fetch high prices. Even the president of South Korea at the time, King Daejung, sent an invitation to Wang Wusok and met him, which was incredibly unusual considering that the president of the nation never interacts with common citizens or even eminent scientists. Wusuk made his desire to clone a Korean tiger very clear in front of the world after becoming recognized as an authority on the subject and beginning to receive financing. Wusuk chose to work on the Korean tiger since it was a symbol of national power at the time and was a highly uncommon and endangered animal which has since regrettably gone extinct. Around the year 2000, Wusuk began conducting experiments on pigs, cows and domestic cats with the intention of cloning a Korean tiger as a representation of the unity between the divided nation of North and South Korea. The project had to be abandoned because the experiment ultimately did not turn out as planned. Despite his failure in this area, Wusuk nevertheless managed to acquire notoriety for himself and his nation by accomplishing something novel on a bigger scale. Dogs had not yet been successfully cloned despite the fact that cloning procedures had been conducted successfully with sheep and cows in several different nations at the time. In 2005, Wusuk and his team at the Seoul National University produced the first cloned dog, an Afghan hound puppy they called Snoopy. With this significant achievement, Wang Wusuk gained a global reputation as the world's foremost expert in cloning and veterinary science. The individual was sought after internationally in addition to receiving funding and chances to conduct research and tests from the Korean government. The documentary also details the incredible story of Mabrukan, a renowned camel with dark skin and a sturdy build that belonged to the UAE ruling family and was held in high regard. Mabrukan reportedly cost 5 million US dollars when he was purchased and some of the Middle Eastern neighbors allegedly offered 20 million US dollars to buy him off, according to one of the vets caring for the animal at the time. Therefore, when Mabrukan passed away one day, only a few of its organs were preserved in the hope that they would one day be cloned, which was a severe loss. After the dairy calf and later Snoopy established Wang Wusok's competence in cloning, the UA government contacted him to travel there and create a Mabrukan clone. Finally, 11 clones of the magnificent animal were produced with Wusok's assistance after it had been dead for 11 years and it furthered his brilliant career. When Wusok revealed that they had begun research on human cloning, things took a whole different path even if cloning of animals did help with the majority of funding issues as well as his reputation. News that South Korean scientists had successfully cloned 30 human embryos in the early months of 2004 was widely applauded because it could pave the way for regenerative medicine. Due to the job he was steadily accomplishing, Wang Wusok began to gain even more financing and accolades and he was now regarded as South Korea's ideal icon. Minor protests were raised, some of which were motivated by the personal conviction that since human embryos are essentially human lives, they shouldn't be subjected to experimentation, but thousands of Wusok supporters gathered to show him support. According to one of the commentators in the documentary, Wang Wusok's popularity in South Korea at the time would be comparable to the current popularity of BTS and Son Hyung Min combined and then multiplied several times over. 
The study was so began may be combined with stem cell research to produce remarkable regenerative treatments that in theory might benefit everyone with any physical disorder or disease. Additionally, Wusuk did not hesitate to make these claims to the public and media and as a result his reputation as an almost miraculous healer who offered amazing medical treatments through science began to take shape. As promised by Wang Wusuk, South Korea even released a commemorative stamp showing a wheelchair user standing up and running on their own two feet. It is brought to the mind that South Korea was in the midst of a transitional period at the time. moving from being a developing country to becoming a developed one while another critic connects Wusok's research to politics therefore Wusok was given even greater backing by the government since such a groundbreaking research would put the nation at the top of the list of accolades and would be a big demonstration of technological advancement to the rest of the globe but no one ever dared to think that Wusok's true fall from grace was only a matter of time away Wang Wusuk's rise to prominence had also been met with some criticism nonetheless he paid little attention to it the majority of early criticism focused on ethics of practice of cloning as many people saw it to be an unnatural activity that went against nature's norms while others saw it as a abomination against god because such complaints are subjective wusuk might easily dismiss them by pointing out the significance and occasionally brutal nature of science which does include harming or exploiting other life forms for knowledge's sake but as a study into human cloning got underway the opposition began to wane and the first objection expressed concerned the source of human eggs he was using for his experiments In a public statement Wusuk said his team had managed to recruit a group of 16 women who voluntarily agreed to undergo the taxing procedure of ovarian hyperstimulation in order to aid in the study. These women were effectively being utilized as harvesters to obtain human eggs for research through this procedure. Later it was discovered that Wusuk's assertions were untrue because some of the ladies though had freely accepted the process were also students and researchers of the medical center. Since they were all employees at the location and may have worried about losing their jobs or may have wanted to impress their senior researchers for professional and academic advancement their voluntary labor may have very well been pressured and persuaded into agreements The news of this which appeared in a competing journal received little attention but was praised as an attempt to denigrate Wang Wusok's great work Later however much more gruesome information regarding Wusuk's malpractices were discovered with the aid of a former research assistant on a Korean investigative journalism TV program called PD Note. It was found that the guy and his team had engaged in unethical practice of purchasing human egg cells since they could not always rely on the apparent volunteers donors for the egg cells. A local infertility clinic had been frequently supplying egg cells to Wusuk's lab and this trade has since expanded to the internet. One of the ladies who had previously contributed her eggs to the cause acknowledged that she had afterwards sold her egg cells which were once more used for research. Even while this misconduct was already damaging enough, further study into Wusuk's studies showed that the individual had also been lying about other matters. In order to demonstrate the efficacy and success of his stem cell research, he frequently manipulated the figures in his published articles. In order to forward the goals of his investigation, fake photos and other proof were also produced. The man's claim that he had successfully produced 11 cell lines by cloning was proven to be utterly untrue and it was discovered that he had only produced 2 cell lines. This was the death blow. While prior criticisms and skepticism had been tempered by many Koreans who had believed in the researcher's noble intentions, this evidence of extensive lying caused the man who was once regarded as the top scientist in the nation to completely lose his reputation. Despite these egregious scientific research malpractices, Wang Wusuk still works in the cloning industry because such acts of scientific duping are not really punishable by the law. but the scientist admits his errors and offers a sincere apology to the people of his nation in the documentary however wusuk also asserts that he would probably carry out the same action if he had a second chance because scientific curiosity and inquiry are always outside the purview of ethics and morals wusuk was accused of fraud embezzlement and violating bioethical regulations following the multiple expose of his misconduct however the accusations of fraudulence were ultimately dropped The individual received a 2 year sentence and after that was kept working in the same industry for business in South Korea and in the UAE. 
The documentary ends with the final project Wusuk has been working on in Siberia, where a mammoth bone has been discovered and the bone is thought to still contain blood and cell. Wusuk has since been given a job working on a project to try and clone the extinct mammoth. The other experts who were brought into the documentary film question whether it would even be ethical to bring back an extinct animal in a world that is completely different from the one it used to live in so many centuries ago. Despite Busek's claim that it is a very interesting and exciting topic. King of Clones is a fascinating look at the morbidities of the cloning industry and how ethics and science are in a constant fight. The lessons about the political and social climate are pertinent and there is a substantial quantity of archive video that properly supports the narrative but the documentary does not appear to take a position on the subject matter and it feels particularly inappropriate in order to tell a swiftly moving story the documentary forgoes a more somber and reflective approach in favor of a generally pacey and buoyant tone which can frequently come off as off putting Hey hey thank you for watching this video do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching King of Clones on Netflix hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series see you at the next one and for the time being we are signing off Anoi Ganchio and I'll be back